today's video, we are going to be testing the Tic-Tac-Doe program. So this is the GitHub repository for it, eRangel KFest 2023. And uh, these are the disk images that are in there right now. TTD2023.po is the disk image that has the game. I broke out any work programs, uh, work in progress to TTD work, and there's int basic sys fun because there is a Protoss version of integer basic, and I moved a bunch of stuff from the DOS integer basic into a fun disk for people to play with. So these are the descriptions of it. This is the low-res entry uh, from last year with the dragon. And um, what's nice about using GitHub is that I could see the history. <clears throat> I could look at all the commits that were made and see what I did each time. So I integrated music and kaleidoscope. I added uh, the files. I added music routines. I added a startup menu. So. This is what the current disk image looks like. What's great is that I could test it in an emulator like Micromate. Okay, so before you could run the game, you need to configure one machine as a client and one machine as a server. And then the client is one of the nine boxes on the Tic-Tac-Doe board. And you only need one server to manage the game, but that server needs to be able to connect to each client's FujiNet. And if you want to exit to Integer Basic and uh, look at some, um, the Integer programs are, are the originals from last year's entry and an update I made in 2023. Okay. This is a FujiNet connected to an Apple IIc through the disk drive port, which is the smart port. So you need a working smart port. And of course you need a joystick, Javier, but uh, let's turn this thing on. And that's a modern uh, bug brick uh, power supply. And there's no disk in the drive, and it boots into FujiNet. And it's trying to connect to a wireless network that is currently offline, so it'll time out, and then you could skip to the SD card. Okay, but you see the little LED there going? Welcome to FujiNet, which has a MAC address, and it's looking for wireless. I'm just going to skip it for now and show you that you can uh, have a hard drive mounted and I have that uh, PO disk image for Tic-Tac-Doe 2023. So if I hit escape, it's going to boot and there's nothing in the floppy drive. So it eventually figures out to go to the FujiNet and boot Protoss from the hard drive. And then you could add a menu option for your startup and um, I copied the uh, data from that disk image to a tic-tac-doe directory. So I'm going to change to that directory. Okay, we've turned on the 2C+, and uh, the Wi-Fi is connected. That white light is your Wi-Fi signal. And now we are going to um, boot the SD card, uh, which has a hard drive image. And we'll boot, so the floppy is empty, so it then scans to the next slot and finds the hard drive. And we're going to go to our FujiNet directory, and there's a tic-tac-doe directory. So I'm going to prefix tic.tac.doe and dash startup. So I copied from the floppy image to the hard drive, and now I am going to configure this machine as a client. So it needs to know the port number for the attached Fuji Apple. And this is what you may have to configure in your port forwarding, though I'm not sure if it's really necessary. But I am using port 6500 for this FujiNet. And now it's asking to verify the IP address in line 5 because once I prove that I can connect successfully it will store that IP address into a text file that will be used by the game so you don't have to remember to enter the IP address every time. So now I'm going to go to Netcat and connect to that IP address. Okay, so this is the Raspberry Pi that is running the TNFS server, and I'm going to 
Um, this one has an IP address of 192.168.1.2, but I'm going to do a netcat minus v for verbose to 192.168.1.7 and uh, missing port number, I need 6500. Okay, now it has a connection accepted. So let's type hello Apple to C and it echoed it back to me. Wow, it works. Okay, and now I hit control C to end the connection. And let's take a look at what happened on the 2C. Okay, so we see that it uh, connected and I'm going to save this file as ttdclient.ini. Okay, so now the client is a, the server is able to connect to this client. Now let's run the client. Whoops. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, what is our F stream? Uh, blank. Okay, let's uh, take a further look at uh, what actually happened when we tried to run that tic tac toe client program. So I am booting it now into the hard drive and um, I changed the menu option for number seven to go right to the tic-tac-toe directory and let's load ttd.game.client okay and I get an IO error okay I copied a fresh version of the client applesoft program and you could see it goes up to line 10 150 but watch what happens when I run it. Loading extensions and it works. Okay, why? I guess the bad image, had, I see, let's see if I list it. Does it still have 10,000 on? Huh, so now it's working. So I had a bad image of that program on the floppy, on the SD floppy. Okay, so now we are listening for a connection. Okay, so now let's connect to port 6500 of the Apple IIc. And I gave an audio cue that two beeps means I got a connection. Okay, so now I can issue commands that start with the left bracket. Like a left bracket with a capital D will show the dragon and it returns an ACK message to the server. And then I could do an X. Now you can leave out that right bracket. So like if I do an O, it'll show an O. And then if I type a K, it should do a kaleidoscope. Okay, so now I didn't get an ACK message back, which means it's still running and still is connected. Yeah, so this is um, the uh, tic-tac-toe kaleidoscope that you would see at the beginning of the show before these apples do anything. So it's running at one megahertz on this 2C, and I just made my own kaleidoscope program. Um, so I will show you how the, um, it started with loading a picture, and then it runs the Applesoft code. Now let's see, if I break the connection, it should stop. Yeah, so three beeps means that the connection was broken, and I have to look further into the logic of exactly how it's handling that, um, because I would like it to um, restore, like wait for another connection. I think it is waiting for another connection now. Let's try reconnecting. So I'm gonna issue the same command from the Raspberry Pi. And yes, I am connected, so now I could show a dragon. And we are looking at the dragon. Wow, it worked. Okay, so now let's try playing some music. Now what's interesting is you heard a little 
uh, pause between each note because it is actually checking the FujiNet status at the end of each note to see if it got another command. So let's try something else. Let's do the kaleidoscope. Now let's do this, um, let's do music. Okay, now did it crash? I think it crashed. So let's see if we can see what that error is. A redimensioned array error in 2110. Oh boy. So I got work to do. Okay, so what I did was interrupt the music because I still had an active connection and uh, I didn't get an ack or a knack, but I got the X. I was able to type rapid X on the client, on the server, <laughs> to send the client an X. So let's try something else. Um, bracket O. And that was a lowercase O, so you have to use an uppercase O. And uh, let us uh, try some music. Hmm, okay, that's my redimensioned array error. Let's test it with the kaleidoscope. Okay, loading extensions. Okay, we're back to 6500. And I'm still connected. Uh, you see the, the Pi, well, it actually disconnected, so that's good. So let's see if we can reconnect. Now I'm getting a connection refused. Isn't that interesting? Because uh, I was connected while this uh, re-ran, and now it's really confused in the network. Uh, I'm listening on the 2C, but trying to connect. So let's see if I disconnect. Error from the 2C. Yeah, so I still won't be able to connect. So now I think I actually, I'm gonna try control rebooting, but I think I'm gonna have to actually reboot the FujiNet to fix this. Okay, I uh, just soft reset the FujiNet and I'm going to reboot. And let's see if we can recover from that uh, network failure. Okay, connecting to Mount Fuji. Hello, Mount Fuji. Ah, my Wi-Fi didn't reconnect. So, let's turn off the 2C. Okay, now let's turn it on and see if the Wi-Fi reconnects first. Come on, Wi-Fi, you can do it. Yay! Okay, so now it's going to boot FujiNet, and now I could hit us just to prove it. I can go to the TNFS server and see I have Apple II disk images, okay. So now let's escape, boot the machine. Okay, and we are booting the hard drive image, and we're gonna go to seven, and uh, dash startup. Okay, so you go to a commercial break when you need to reboot the server, right? <laughs> reboot your client, great. Okay, now we get an I.O. error, and this is weird. So something gets corrupted, and uh, let's look at 10,000 on. Yeah, something gets corrupted, and I am getting uh, this uh, incomplete program loading because of an I.O. error on the SD card, maybe? Okay, so I could try running from the disk image itself. So let's reboot that and uh, let's um, see what we got here. Okay, I have to soft reset the FujiNet again. Okay, and then uh, it's not reconnecting to Wi-Fi yet. So I'm gonna turn off the 2C and turn it back on. Oh, look at that. Yeah, don't turn it on so fast. It needs time to let its DRAM uh, drain, but there's some capacitance left, I guess, in it. Okay, booting. Now I'm connected to Wi-Fi. Fujionet. 
Okay, so I have the KFS disk image mounted as the second one, so I'm going to boot into the hard drive and exit to um, Bitsy by. Um, or exit to Protoss, and I'm going to go to, it's an old uh, version of Dial. Okay, so I'm going to run basic system from here in the tic-tac-toe, which is the um, floppy image of it. And now let's try running the client. Okay, so I'm getting a path not found. That's because I did not configure it. So if you list four, it can't verify TX string. Okay, so there's no client any distributed with the official image. So now I'm going to rerun the test. Now I want to dash startup. Okay, so we're going to configure the client. And this is 6500, and it's 1.4, no it's not. Okay, so I want to break, so let's list five and change this client's IP address to 1.7. Now I could try to find a way for the FujiNet to tell me its IP address, I just haven't looked into that. So I'm gonna run this now, and it's 6500. Okay, now I'm gonna have to do a test of connecting to 6500, so I'm gonna go to the Raspberry Pi and do that test. Okay, here we are on the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna to try to connect again. And we are connected. Tick, tack, no! Yay! Okay, so now I control C to disconnect and it should give a prompt on the 2C asking me to save the Fuji the client identity. And I say yes. And my disk is right protected. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's reboot. I want to see if I can mount it as uh, read write and if this will work. Okay, so I have to soft reset the FujiNet again. Soft reset. Now, is that a bug that when you soft reset, it's not reconnecting to Wi-Fi automatically? I have to turn off the machine. Okay. Wait a few seconds. Okay, so I'm going to unmount the floppy. So I hit tab, move there, and uh, E to eject it. And then I want to eject copy to plus. Okay, so now tab, I go to my SD card, and I'm going to 4K Fest 2023, and I want TTD work 2023. And let's put that in two, and type W for shift, yeah, W for right, and while I'm here, uh, let me put that integer basic fun disk. Okay, well, I don't want to. Yeah, that should, that should work. This is, volume is different. Okay, let's put that in as uh, read only. All right, so I have a hard disk and two floppies, and I'm going to hit escape to boot. And I want to look in copy two plus to see how it mounted those floppies. As it reboots, goes to the hard drive. All right, we'll go to Prodos and run copy two plus. And catalog disk, normal question mark. Okay, so scanning the drives. So my hard disk is slot five drive one, the tic-tac-toe floppy is five two, and the int basic floppy is in slot two drive one. So here I have Apple Trek, uh, BioRhythms, uh, some of those uh, nice integer basic programs from DOS 3.2.1. There's the infinite number of monkeys, which had its name truncated. Okay, uh, some of my programmers ate experiments. Okay, so let's uh, now boot quit, quit to Prodos, and I should be able to go to tick.tac.do and run Prodos. Okay, now it should be a writable image. So what I'm gonna just do is test that. Cat, new, save Eric. Yes, Eric has been saved. And 
more ways than one. All right, dash startup. Okay, let's run TTD client. Yeah, not found. Okay, so we have to configure it. So let's start up. So this is, when everything works, this is what you're going to do. You're going to run, configure the client. You put your 6500 and uh, your IP address should be 17. So let me fix that. Load uh, ttd.client.test list 5. So this should be replaced by an IP detection algorithm, or just calling a FujiNet status call. And let me save ttd client.test. So this is now my floppy image, not supported anymore. <laughs> okay, port 6500. Okay, and let's test connecting to it from the Raspberry Pi. Yay, tick, tack, do, boo, Atari. Okay, we've had our fun, control C. Now we can save our any file, say yes. And we've created our text file that's used by the client. Now let's run the client again and loading extensions. Now we are listening, so this is for real. So let's start with the kaleidoscope. So we connect to it, and we've connected K for kaleidoscope. Okay, now the kaleidoscope should be checking the FujiNet status. So like if I do a, a bracket D, it should flip to the dragon slash D. Okay, now what happened? We are looking at the dragon. How nice. Okay, so I got here a uh, ak, ak Okay, so let's go to some music. Knack. Bracket M. <laughs> Okay, I went back to the kaleidoscope, which is nice. So this Apple IIc is become, being controlled by the FujiNet server. Okay, and now let's go from the kaleidoscope to an X, to a capital X. And did it work? Yes, it did. Now let's go to a capital O. And I got a knack. Okay, did my server disconnect? Um, okay, that would be... Um, let's see. Let's try this again. Okay, that was a knack beep. Uh, some command it didn't recognize. And now I'm showing the O. Now the way it works is I'm gonna have um, categories. So, like, I could have a bracket C equals Apple history, okay? And then that will set um, the category, and I'm working on a low-res font for displaying the category names. Because in Tic-Tac-Doe, you have uh, nine categories being shuffled and the money being shuffled, so I'm working on some low-res routines for displaying that. And then um, there will be a question when the contestant picks it. There will be a question equals who built the Apple one? And then you'd have to answer with the correct Steve. Waz built it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So then uh, if you get it right and you're player X, you get an X. Okay, uh, that's a knack X. Yay. And then you're supposed to make a tic-tac-toe pattern. And then uh, we'll put something in that displays the dragon. There's like a bonus round. Uh, what happened there? Slash D. Yeah, dragon. 
Okay, so that's uh, today's test of Kansas Fest 2023. Tic-tac-toe over Fujinet. And music. Okay, we've crashed. We've redimensioned our array. Have a great day. Okay, we're now looking at an Apple II GS, and uh, it has a reactive micro, uh, micro drive turbo in slot seven. Now I'm gonna go into the control panel. Um, okay, control panel. Okay, and uh, if we look at the slots, now you'd think that I could just change the sl startup slot to slot five and then boot it into FujiNet and uh, everything will be hunky-dory. Well, let's try that. So now it's running config and uh, let's see, you could get to your TNFS uh, directory and you could mount an image, no problem. Okay, so the problem is when you try to do networking. So let's escape and boot the hard drive from the Fuji net now. Okay, and let's go to Fuji Tic-Tac-Toe. Okay, I'm going to try configuring a client. And uh, this is port uh, 6501. And it is 1.4. Now it's waiting for a connection, but it won't be able to successfully connect. And I'm going to try that from the Raspberry Pi just to prove it. Okay, the Raspberry Pi got a connection refused when it tried to connect to this uh, connection on the 2GS. So I'm going to break it and I'm going to change it so we could do some debugging. Okay, so if you look at line four, it says set that to dbg1 or dbg2 to debug. So I'm gonna to go to dbg1. Dot, needs a dot dbg1. Okay, so now if we list four, run it, we're going to get some debugging information. Okay, now notice it found a dispatcher address of C726 and it could not find the network. That 03 network is all zeros. It should be the uh, device number of the FujiNet network, which is something like seven, eight, or nine. So that is the problem if you're using startup slot equals scan. So the, I'll show you the workaround for this. We'll go back to the control panel and enter it and go to slots, and the point is to make seven something else, like a built-in Apple talk, and then set, uh, you could leave it as five, but I like to leave it as scan as a default. On a ROM three, it actually requires another slot, like slot one to be set to Apple talk. Okay, now I'm gonna hit escape to boot and quit, and now we'll try the same test again. Okay, Fuji Tic-Tac-Toe, and we're configuring a client. And enter the port number, 6501, and this should work. I'm gonna go to the Raspberry Pi and send it something. Okay, and that shows that it worked, and now let's run it in debug mode again. And now you see that the first byte of the 03 network is a 08, and that is the device number on the FujiNet when you um, boot it and um, check the devices in the config application. Mm -hmm.